Okay, so now we're going to look at some soloing ideas to improvise over dark eyes. Um, now, what I tend to do is loosely solo around, um, play the arpeggios, maybe run up and down an arpeggio and then play a little bit of a run. Um, and there are some really nice little positions for arpeggios that seem to work quite well. Um, the first chord is an A7. Ba -da 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 -da. So then it goes to D minor, so A7, 2, 3, uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, D2, 3, 4, D2, 3, 4, A2, 4, A2, 3, 4, A sharp, 2, 3, 4, A. So it does two bars of A7, two bars of D, two bars of A7, then shifts up two bars of A sharp or B flat, whichever way you look at it. So a nice arpeggio for A, for A. play C, the notes of C here. Just try and get this guitar in a bit better, sorry. Okay, if you play the notes of C, that note there, that's a C. That's why it's called a C, because the root note on the A string, third fret, that's a C. If you move it up, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, so A, that's an A. So if you play a C, there, there then that's actually an A. But of course, all of, oops, got my pick, all of the notes aren't, um, on the strings you're not fretting are out of tune. So either you could put a capo there and then and then play the C or you could just bar it and play a C. And if you bar it, that's an A, but using a C shape. If you play all of the notes of that, that's an arpeggio of A. Now that's a little bit um, Tricky to it's just a bit of a uh, tough chord. Actually, I I call that personally I call that the Harrison chord, uh, the George Harrison chord. He always played that. If you watch videos of the Beatles, you've got um, Lennon kind of he'd be playing an A here. Love, love me do, you know. And then Harrison would be although they do it in G. Harrison would be up here going, and McCartney would be at the back going. Anyway, um. So, Ringo would be on the drums. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting carried away. So there's your A, and um, what you can do is try and play the notes of that individually. So, that's, and then if you, after you've got that, so 12th fret, 11th fret on the D, 9th fret on the G, 10th fret on the B, nine on the toppy, then you can finish it with the 12th fret. And it's really, I use that constantly, that's probably my most used shape when I'm soloing in gypsy jazz. I use it in blues, I use it in everything, and um, particularly jazz and bluegrass as well, just basically for playing the guitar, it's a really good shape. Just using those notes. I don't know what I was playing there. It sounded a bit American. But... Anyway. anyway, so it's really good to get that shape down. Okay, that was a, a long... Um, sidetrack there because the arpeggio to use on the A7 I tend to go there so just the top so you're going 9, 10 on the B, 9 on the toppy, 12 on the toppy you can even 
go down to the 11th fret on the D. Okay, so back to Dark Eyes, I'll show you how that sounds. So it's like... Okay, so from the top... Then to D. So you don't have long, but in that time you can just kind of... So practice getting that on the A7. Just practice going up and down it, you can do any pattern, as long as it's in time. You can miss out notes, you can go up and down it, you've, you've got to take a little bit of time to figure it out, and figure out how it sounds. That note there, that's your A, on the B string, the 10th fret on the B string, so it's nice to land on that one. So on the A7 you play that chord, and it goes back to D. So ba -da 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 -da, back to D minor. So what are you going to do on the D minor? Well, you're up here, and you know that that's just a normal D minor on the tenth fret. You just bar the whole of the 10th fret and you play those two fingers like the A minor, the E minor shape but just up on the 10th fret so 10 on the E 12, 12, 10, 10, 10 just barring it, a simple power chord so that's a D minor shape so why not after you've done that A7 thing All I'm doing is playing the notes, the top four strings, just going up and down it. So, 12, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12. You can even, you could even, uh, well, you know that D minor, the scale is D minor, so you know that, you know that that's the top of D minor. So, so what I'm doing there is playing an arpeggio of the D chord, and also notes of the scale of the D minor. So um, I'll show you those two together. So I'll play the chords and then uh, the rhythm. And then after I've played through D A7 twice, then D minor twice, I'll then um, do the solo that I would have done over those chords. So one, two, three. Here we go. jamming up and down it. Um, then it goes back to A7. After that it goes to A sharp. So all I do is move that shape up a fret. In the same way that all you're doing is moving that up a fret. Just move that shape up a fret. You're just moving it up to a an A sharp arpeggio. So those four chords together, then solo. One, two, three. Okay, from the start. That's the four chords there using arpeggio style solos. After that, it goes to G minor. Ba -da -da. Or. Ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 -da. So G minor, well up here, G minor is actually dead easy. It's just, it's the A minor shape, which is, but just moved up so that the root note is a G. So it's a G minor. So it's uh, the A minor shape, but starting barring on the tenth fret, and then the rest of the chords there. So it's ten on the on the A string, twelve, twelve, eleven, ten. 
So that's a G minor. Another way to, to play the top three notes is just to go 10 on the top E, 11 on the B, 12 on the G. So, interestingly, it's very similar shape to the A sharp arpeggio. In fact, all you do, all you're doing is instead of going, you're going, it's just one note different in those top three strings. So, what I'll do is I'll play the, so, I practice going up and down the whole shape of the chord. I add in this note, which is a minor third, or it's the 13th fret on the A string. It gives you a bit more of a whole sound. Um, or I'll just, in fact, I can even just stay on the top, top three strings. I may even throw in that note there from the D minor scale. Still thinking with the tune is all in D, so D minor. So you can still throw in some D stuff. So let, I'll play through the four, the the five chords now that we've just covered: the A7, D minor, A7, A sharp, G minor. Okay, one, two, three, four, one. Ba -da -da. So from the top, A7, D, G minor, D, A7, to D. So I'm always thinking chords, A7, Basically, how you do it, and it take it'll take you the long the more you practice doing it, the, the better you get at it until it sounds pretty nice. So um, that's the technique um, that I use to to solo on it. And let me just see if I can play along with the backing track um, a couple of times just to give you an example, and then I'll stop and find the. YouTube, I just go YouTube, backing track, uh, I'll just type in Dark Eyes backing track, um, sorry I should have had this organised before, but, okay, Dark Eyes backing track, let's load it, ah, here we go, hopefully it's not too quick, but if it is, well, There'll be a slow one as well. Ah, it's not too bad. Okay. A. B.
19 more minutes um, so yeah so that's the that's a, the way to solo over it and it just takes a bit of time sitting there just getting the shapes under your fingers and doing it slowly um, and the more you do it the better, better you get and trying to figure out other arpeggios of um, the A7 chord the D minor chord the G if you, the more arpeggios you know around the fretboard the more places you can go um, so it's basically all about learning the the shapes of the chords. That's the that's the best way to solo um, over this kind of stuff. I hope that was informative. And yeah, thanks for watching, and see you soon.